Champions, how the flipping heck are you? Today we're going to build a champ cabinet. It's a bloody beautiful day today, so let's uh, let's do some woodworking out in the fresh air. I'm going to run you through the process or how I do it anyway. I've got some drawings there which you can use as a guide. I'll put the link in the uh, description down below. I'm going to use pretty much stuff you can get at any hardware, uh, with the exception of maybe the, the grill cloth, uh, which you can get from Mojo Tone Tube Depot or you know locally Evac Co Speaker Factory, that kind of thing. See, so all over the place anyway. Uh, and maybe these little screw inserts, which I like using, but you know, you by no means need to use these. You could just use T nuts uh, if you wanted to. But everyone asks about these, so there's the code. Pause and take note. So to keep it simple, we're going with 9mm ply for everything, the back panels and the baffle. And just off the shelf, uh, dressed pine. This is just like radiata, pretty decent grade. When you get a piece, just don't just grab one, check along the, the length of it, see how straight or twisted it is and try to get the best piece if you can. Other timbers can be used, you know, like you could do a, a non non-covered one out of like a mahogany or a rosewood or something, something really nice. Um, but I'm just going with pine for this one. It's easy to work, it's easy on the tools. It's relatively cheap, very lightweight, and uh, if it's the, the good quality stuff, it's pretty dimensionally stable as well. So note there's a thickness. If you're using any other thickness than that, dimensions will need to be changed on almost every part. Uh, the drawing will become um, inaccurate in that case. So uh, you'd have to compensate if it was anything other than 19 mil. So here's the major tools in question. I've got the Makita track saw. That makes life a bit easier for cutting the panels uh, and the, you know, the baffle and stuff. I've got my uh, little trimmer there, which I've removed the base of and I've made a little uh, radius jig there. I've got a quarter inch single flute cutter in there and uh, I've just used the, the base as a um, template to reuse the same screw holes. So this is just a fretboard blank had lying around with some pretty low grade maple. Uh, but yeah, any any timber you could use for that or even another piece of ply or um, you know something nicer like a piece of aluminium or whatever. And you can see here I've got the holes set for uh, different radii and then uh, I've got lots of longer ones as well, which I use for like furniture or that kind of thing because I, I do some other joinery in my downtime. What's that? So here's the track saw. It's uh, Makita's answer to the, the Festo uh, unit, which is like three times the price or something. This one works beautifully. I've uh, used this as a full-time tradesman and now it's got a pretty easy life just doing like a couple of jobs a year. You can join these up to each other. Um, they uh, they have that rod in, in there which allows you to join them up to indefinite lengths. I think the longest one you can get unbroken is three meters, uh, but generally they come in 1.5 meter lengths. So the trim is good because it's nice and wieldy for doing things like the speaker cutout, but when you need more horsepower, it's good to go to a half inch router. Uh, this is going to do the, the box joints, finger joints, whatever you want to call them with a the little jig I've got here. I just got this... Um, Dovetail comb, they call it, a replacement. You can buy replacements for common jigs. And I've just uh, mounted it in a single purpose jig there, which I just use for doing speaker cabinets and head cabinets. So here's the comb uh, available from Carbotech in Sydney, about 60 bucks. Uh, I dare say this isn't manufactured in Australia because it's a replacement for, uh, I think, a Chinese dovetail jig. So it's probably available under different names elsewhere. And later on, when we finish the cabinet, we'll round it over. That's a half inch uh, round over with the follow bearing on there. And there are different ways to do it too. You could do it with a uh, dado blade um, on a table saw, or uh, you know, if you had access to a CNC or something, you could do that too. This is just the home gamer method, which pretty much anyone will be able to do, uh, providing you've got the right tools. Beg, steal, or borrow. Now, instead of cutting, you know, shape parts from scratch every time. Uh, the preferable way of doing it is um, I'll get my brother to cut me a template or cut the actual pieces on the CNC. If I get a template cut, I can just cut them in my own time. I don't need to bother him. Um, so I'll often uh, just get a template cut out of like 16 mil MDF, use that as my guide for, uh, for making future pieces. But what I will show you is how to lay out one of these if you did want to make a template, but the exact same method could be used for if you just wanted to make a one-off and you didn't want the template at all. So I've got some optional extras, uh, including the vacuum there, so the uh, the track saw doesn't get clogged up with sawdust. I've got a basic drop saw there, which you could use to cut stuff to width, but uh, that's not a slide compound, so you'd have to cut it from both sides. I just have an aluminium blade on that one all the time. Got the sander there for finishing her off. There's no reason to sand this one any finer than you know 40 grit if that i just go 80 and i've got the slide compound there it's a little bit easier than trying to cross cut with the track uh it's a little bit awkward and not very accurate you can just set this one to 90 degrees and off you go 
And another nice to have is a uh, Japanese pull saw. I just use this for squaring out the corners, for example, where the top and uh, bottom rails across the front that the baffle fix, fixes to are rebated into the ends. It's just a little bit easier. This particular one's got a little uh, tooth there, so you can do plunge cuts too if you want to. As indicated by little mate there, he's loving life. Woody Woodpecker. So I'll run you through the cut list and the, the drawing, and uh, we'll figure out how we're going to cut everything to be most efficient, and we'll start doing things like laying out the baffle. All right, champion, so here's the concept. Uh, this is just showing you the, the overall look of the cabinet. These are the overall dimensions of the, the outside of the cabinet as well as the, the sizes of the panels, the, the allowance for the thickness of the tweed. You know, you've got like two mil. It comes in a little under one mil per layer uh, with a little bit of clearance there. Clearance is not a bad thing as long as it's not a gaping gaping ravine. Here's the section showing the, the cabinet detail and the, the baffle. Here's the cleat to suspend the grill cloth in midair so it doesn't flap against the face of the baffle when you're playing bassier notes. And I've made the cabinet to suit uh, pretty much any speaker you can throw at it, eight inch speaker anyway. So the red outline there is indicative of, uh, I think it was a Jensen Alnico. Uh, and that was sort of worst case scenario, 105 deep. And then uh, your typical eight inch ceramic is designated uh, by that purple dotted line there. And this is the outline of a JJ's valve, which is the tallest one. And this is your typical 5F1 ch chassis dimension um, available from, I think, CE Distribution does them, um, uh, probably all the other suppliers in the States as well. And they all seem to have this common profile, so I've gone with that. You may need, read the notes, <laughs> you may need to uh, adjust stuff according to what you've actually got on hand, so just be be cognizant of that. But yeah, jump on my website, download these drawings, and uh, the next page is where the magic happens. This is all your individual pieces. So that that uh, designates the material up the top. You've got two materials. You've got 19mm solid, uh, solid pine, and you've got 9mm ply. The only thing I haven't individually detailed is the cleats against the, the front grill. Uh, but I've drawn them in so you can you can figure out, you know, the sizes off those. Um, it's got holes. Ideally, all of this stuff lines up because it's drawn in 3D. So if, you, if you're very accurate and you stick to these measurements, everything should line up perfectly. Sometimes if you don't have very accurate tooling methods, like if you're drilling these by hand, it might be a good idea to just leave them until you've uh, got the thing built and then drill critical stuff like the ba baffle screw holes uh, where you've got the baffle in position that way you know everything's lined up if stuff's moved a little bit this is drawn for the um you know the, the vintage fanboy leather handles that love to go manky and uh fray i'd suggest using one of those pleather handles or a plastic one i know it doesn't suit the vintage aesthetic but it'll actually last but if you really want that vintage thing just replace the handle every other year you could probably get a good leather dude to make a, a new handle out of higher grade leather that will last longer. But point being, just adapt these uh, handle measurements to suit whatever handle you've got on hand. So that's a lot. That's what we're going to cut today. So let's get to it. So here's my workbench at, at the home workshop. This used to be my electronics bench. Uh, now, obviously, that's at the shop. Over here, I've got other nice-to-haves, like a drill press, so you can get your holes nice and square and parallel and uh grinder for sharpening your tooling cutting screws that kind of thing linisher bandsaw big monster metabo there but generally you can get away with building these cabinets with uh pretty minimal tools if you got the time if you're going to pump them out try and do it efficiently uh, you'll need to have some kind of automation or or templates that kind of thing to streamline the uh, cutting process because that's the most time consuming so here champions i'm cutting the left and right sides into one piece just so I can rip it down to uh, width and then and then dock it up from there. Now I'll cut the base at 343 long. All right, so now we'll cut the top at 343. We'll cut it slightly oversized first and then trim it just to make sure it's nice and square. I'm cutting it out of a uh, piece of Smaller profile stock, just to try and be efficient. All right, so there's our two ends still in one piece. I'm gonna slice this down here, uh, and we can use the, the waste as uh, the cleats. Here's the base. 
a little bit twisted that one i might might get a nicer piece they do sort of average out once you've uh, joined it all up and there's the there's the top now we've got to put a slight bevel on the front of the top and uh, bottom to match the angle front of the cabinet and once we've removed our strip from here to be super efficient we'll cut this down the guts and then we'll put our angle on the front of the ends as well I just don't like wasted material bros partially because I don't throw it out and it ends up in the rack forever. So the overall depth of the ends is 205. Just mark that here. And up the other end, and we'll get our track. Of course, you could rip this on the table saw if you had one too. That'd be a lot easier. I do have a table saw, but it's pretty inaccurate. It's a bit of a widow maker. It's meant for like cutting large slabs for, for processing. So uh, yeah, it's not very accurate. It doesn't give a very nice cut, but it will cut pretty much anything in one pass. So that's where it shines. Now I've got these off cuts of like office pin board, like that uh, acoustic panel stuff, because you need to cut through the actual piece and into a sacrificial piece underneath. This stuff's kind of grippy, so it sort of holds the workpiece, and the blade totally doesn't even know it's there in terms of cutting into it. So you only have to cut in by about two or three mil, just to make sure that you've actually gone completely through the workpiece. Now you can see there, I got a bit of a burn from ripping with the finer blade because I was lazy. I always used to rip into my workmates for not changing the blade. Uh, you kind of want to course a blade on there if you're doing rip cuts, regardless of the timber, because the, uh, the, the fine tooth blade will gum up over time and it can burn it. So now I'll just mark our angle of our front panel. So 186 is the measurement. Then that goes down to zero off cut at the other end. Just mark that. You don't really need to mark it when you're using the fest tool. Oh, sorry, fraudulent slip. When using the track saw because the track itself is the straight edge but it just helps you eye it up and you get two free door stops out of it too now because the front edge of our top and bottom uh got almost a four degree angle on them uh the beauty of this saw is you can set that so at the same time as trimming it you can actually cut that angle as well because the saw blade pivots around the cutting edge the actual top reference line that you've pencil drawn on the piece of timber uh, you can just cut that as the overall dimension and set your angle and it takes the remainder off the bottom face of course you could use a jointer or even plane that by hand as well but this is uh this does it all in one quick motion and there you have it barely perceptible but uh it just means that we uh will have all the front edges aligning beautifully when we join them up and just setting her up for a bit of a dry run to make sure we're on the right track just got a piece of uh off cut of nine mil ply there and you can see She's sitting nice and flush, so that's what we're after. This gives me a chance to show off my Mitutoyo hand tools, measuring tools, combination square. Thing of absolute beauty. I'll have that one forever. I've been through about four or five of the Empire ones and they wear out. This this uh, piece that locks onto the, the ruler is made out of the softest aluminium known to man. Uh, so you go to the hardware and you see everyone's pulled them out of them and stolen them because <laughs> they feel ripped off that their combination square doesn't even last a year. But you'll have no such problems with anything made in Japan. So, champions, now I'm just going to size these cleats. Uh, it gets a little bit sketchy when you're cutting stuff this small, so I back up the other side of the ruler with uh, another piece of the th same thickness. And this uh, this rubber on here, when it's clean anyway, is actually really grippy, so it does hold on, believe it or not. But yeah, generally, it's, it's ill-advised to cut anything under, say, I don't know, 100 mil on these things because it could go flying. I'll just cut the uh, two back panel fixing cleats to length, just trim one end, going 267 for these, I'll just mark one of them, hold the ends flush, I'll just cut them both at once. Alrighty champions, there's the solid pieces all cut to size, next we'll uh, start setting out on the plywood uh, and we'll start doing the more intricate machining. Alright, so now I'll cut a piece uh, oversized just so it's a bit easier to wrangle, near enough's good enough. We'll just cut this to about 350 because the largest pieces uh, in length is the baffle cleats, which are 343, uh, 350 oversize, and then we'll trim it down once we've ripped everything. And just remember to uh, adjust the, the depth of cut between different materials so you don't end up cutting your sacrificial pieces in half straight away. Our lower back panel is 115. So we'll cut them first. Otherwise, we'd have to keep measuring and allowing for the saw cut. It's easier to just cut it, measure it, cut it. Sorry, I think I said lower. That's our upper back panel. That's what covers the actual chassis. The lower back panel is 50 mil. Then we've got the front face panels. 
top and bottom, which are both 45. Just mark them both now. Cut one, spin it around, cut the other. And that's our off cut, which we could use for a uh, back or front panel for a future cabinet. All right, so there's all our main pieces cut. Next I'll uh, thickness down some of these off cuts and bits and pieces uh, to make the cleats for the baffle to suspend the grill in midair so it doesn't flap against the front when you're playing. I like to leave the front top and bottom panels uh, until the cabinet's actually glued up because if, if it's grown a little bit in width, uh, you can always adjust for that by uh, just making them a little longer whereas you can't do that if you've already cut them to length. So Now I am cheating a little bit because I've got this big bastard. <laughs> it's a Jet JPT310H, something like that. It's got the uh, Helix blades there, which are individual turnover knives. Ooh, got a cracked one. Better replace that. But these are really good for doing real curly grain, uh, like figured maple and stuff, uh, without tear out, because it actually shears at the grain rather than smacking it in the face with a bit of high speed steel and the tungsten holds an edge for longer and sharper as well so it's it also uses less power for that reason and it's less noisy still pretty noisy but the um straight blade cutters sound terrible you can hear them from blocks away it's also good for doing recycled stuff because if you do miss a nail or something you'll only take one tooth out or nick one tooth rather than uh having to take them all out and re resurface them again which is a, a pretty uh, tedious job and then aligning them up again these just screw in the one position you sort of you can't get them wrong unless you're pissed so we'll convert that over to thicknessing mode and we'll just thickness down our uh, speaker grill cloth cleats I suppose I should have got my dust extractor out for that, but oh, too late now. So laying out the baffle, get a 600mm ruler. All the dimensions, relevant dimensions are on the drawing. So first I'll just mark the centre of the speaker. Double check you're in the centre. Yep. And start ruling the lines. Now just by chance, these happen to be a perfect square, 151 by 151. 151 millimeters. So if we go from the corner of the panel through the center, conveniently we've got a 45 degree line now. Same over here. And that will uh, that will be where our screw holes will go for the speaker driver. So the screw holes are sitting at a 98 millimeter radius so we'll mark that set the ruler to 98 mark it at 0 and 196 just double check everything 98 yep set it at 98 196 0 that's 98 so that is our four screw holes there pretty simple to set out by hand I'll just mark our fixing holes, 50 mil in from the ends. It's just an arbitrary figure that looks about right. Seven mil up from the bottom. And nine mil down from the top. So these are reference to the front panel. So the measurements look the same on the front. It's just uh, they're slightly different because of the angle of the front. So now we've got to drill a 3 mil hole in the center. Uh, we may as well drill all of these while we're at it. I won't drill these to the finished size just yet because I want to I want to screw them to something so when we cut the rounds, uh, the radius for the um, speaker hole, uh, it's not trying to fly away from us. It'll be fixed to a, a sacrificial back panel, which in this case is just an old piece of MDF. So I'll take you over to the drill press. We'll cut it on. The, we'll drill the holes on the drill press just to make sure they're nice and straight. Uh, and then we'll bring it back over here and start doing the routing for the speaker hole. Right, 
Alrighty, yeah. Next, I'll just uh, kind of sink two of these holes. Just so the screw head gets down below the surface. And we'll just fix her off to the uh, piece of MDF. All right, so we'll grab our three mil drill out of the drill press. Just pop that in the middle there. And our jig, we choose our 92 mil, eight inch cutout. She drops down like that. Now this jig's way bigger than it needs to be for this application, but it's a universal jig. So it's made for uh, going up to like 500 mil radius for furniture and whatnot. For speaker purposes, literally that's a 15 inch driver there, 18 inch, you could you could cut it off like there and that would, would be every speaker except for, you know, uh, if you're doing a back to the future set. All right, so as mentioned earlier, I've got a single flute quarter inch cutter in there. Uh, I'm just gonna gently plunge it using this mechanism here as, as we go. I'm not gonna do it in one pass. As I plunge, you'll notice I'll rock it back and forth. That's just to clear the cut as it's plunging because uh, router bits don't like to just plunge straight in. They wanna uh, be able to get rid of those chips as they're going, so that helps it drive in without setting fire to anything. <laughs> All right, champions, put your earplugs in. Let's go for it. Now I just like to clear the chips out with each pass. This will get done in two passes. Just helps give a clean cut without any burning. All right, we'll go for it all the way through this time. All right, out she comes. Just vacuum up all the schmoo. And there's our baffle. Just remove it from the board. Just clean up the uh, any furriness from the plywood. All right, champions, time to glue the little cleaties on. So they're uh, 19 by six mil thick. Just got some tight bond, whatever. Tight bond one in this case. Line her up. Now I've just got my staple gun loaded with 12 mil leg length staples. It's enough to uh, do the job. Don't need a million of them. And try to avoid the 50 million from the screw. Because when you have to drill through, you don't want to hit your staple. Here we go. Do that for the other three. Wipe off the excess glue and set that aside to dry. All right, now I'll give all these a bit of a countersink. Just so the, uh, we're sure that the threaded inserts will sit flush. Or actually, preferably slightly lower than flush. Now here's little buggers up close. Uh, they take like an Allen key, a four millimeter Allen key to drive them in. And then there are M4 thread. You can get them in other threads and lengths too. This is uh, pretty much as small as I think Hayfley sell them for. Uh, and it's 10 mil long, which means it will slightly protrude on the other side, but that won't matter because there's a gap to the grill cloth anyway. So just again, they, uh, they require a six, well, this particular type requires a 6.5 mil hole. Uh, technically, I think it's quarter inch, so 6.35 or whatever. Um, but yeah, I'll give it a little bit of extra room just so it feeds in nice and doesn't sort of go off on an angle. You can see the top of them's a little bit sort of countersunk too. So by giving it a countersink, countersink it just assists it to rest just below the surface. Like so. That's all it takes. Now, we'll insert them from this side because uh, if they ever get cross-threaded or otherwise damaged, um, they'll still be removable from this face instead of having to remove the grill cloth or, you know, other such uh, calamities. Next, we'll arrest all of these. So arresting means putting like a little two mil radius on all the edges uh, and just give it a quick sand to get rid of the furriness and um, we'll we'll coat it with some matte black, just, just you know, shaking <laughs> aerosol can. <laughs> Dirty minds.
And while we're arising stuff, we'll do the uh, the back panels as well. The cabinet will have to be arised, but we'll do that once it's glued together so we know where to stop because um, you don't want it to pass through where there's a join or you'll end up with a little V-groove, which may be visible through the tweed. Now, you can just arise panels by hand with like 80 grit sandpaper or something, but it's a bit tedious. And, uh, well, you know, we've, we like higher tech solutions for those kind of things around here. So I've got this little uh, like two millimeter round over radius bit. You just set it just so and uh, makes pretty short work of it. I'll just give that a quick sand with the Orby. I've just got 120 grit on there, and 80, 120, whatever. Don't get too fancy, it's only getting matte black. It's just to get the furry bits off so the paint's a little bit more of a regular finish. Matte black, you can just use any quick dry enamel, whatever. Oh, my can's about to run out on me. Might have to do a dash to the hardware before they close. Doesn't need to be perfect, it's just uh, so you don't see it through the grill cloth. Let that dry for a tick and then we'll uh, flip her over and do the other face. And we'll run it low. You bastard. I have to go to the hardware for fuck's sake. Alright, so I got to the hardware like five seconds before they closed. Uh, I didn't have time to wait for the person to open the cage for these things, so I just picked the lock. But there's the paint that I use anyway. Like I said, there's many other brands that'll be fine. Whoa. Throw my arm back. Now you could go with just a, a shellac finish to the baffle. I personally like shellac on the in, inside of the cabinet and then black on the baffle because it really makes the speaker stand out, really makes it pop. Uh, but it's personal preference. As, as long as it's sealed, it's fine. All right, with the baffle done, time to turn our attention onto the rest of the cabinet. We'll do the box joints first or finger joints. Someone <laughs> corrected me saying it's a box joint, but everyone knows what I'm talking about. Come on, champions, work with me here. And then we'll do the, uh, the the hand cutting that we need to, to to notch in the front panels and whatnot. All right, champions, we're pulling out the monster. So I've got to go with the quarter inch shank bit because I thought I had a half inch follow cutter, um, but I don't. I've got like a 20 mil one, which is not going to work in this jig. So I'm going to have to use the uh, adapter collet along with the um, quarter inch. There's no biggie. It still works fine. Now we have to plunge in in one cut because um, if we're going to try and do that in two passes... The bearing's not going to hit the template, so seems a little bit violent, but uh, we've got to do this in one pass, but the router can take it. Trust me, I've done it before. So it's, here it's a matter of looking at the drawing and figuring out which one has the, I guess you call it female section here. Uh, so this one is, the other one uh, would be over one notch. The So the top and bottom would be starting under one of the combs because it mates into here, so they're opposite of each other. As for the half overlay here, the little bit poking out, protruding, um, we don't have to worry about that because that's going to get notched out for the front pieces anyway. All in all, if you're going to make one of these, just triple check the drawings. I mean, I didn't draw them for nothing. Don't be like an architect and uh, order super detailed drawings and then don't read them. All right, champions, it's go time. Earplugs in, safety goggles on. Now, oh, that wasn't too dramatic, was it? Clean up the end bit there a bit. Uh, should actually scribe them. Usually just a art knife or a Stanley knife or something and just put a scribe at the 90mm mark just to stop break out. So what we can do is use these two pieces on each other, test for clearance. You don't want it super tight because uh, it'll wipe all the glue back off the join as you push them together. So you want them to sort of go together but come apart again. Uh, a lot of guys will rave about their, their amp. Um, holding together with no glue, but often that means that the, the joint is too tight. The glue actually makes the, the timber swell out a little bit and then locks it into place. Uh, if you've got a really tight joint, um, you're actually going to squeegee the glue off the face, so there's going to be no glue left there uh, by the time the joint's, you know, hammered home. But what would I know? I've only been in joinery since I was about, you know, 15 or something. We've got a little bit of break out there, which is unfortunate. That's why I should have scribed it in this position or maybe done a half pass and then moved her over. Uh, but we'll just position this so it's on the outside uh, and then the round off cutter will get rid of that anyway. So it's all about, you know, coming up with solutions to problems, legends. Don't panic if something goes wrong. Just think, how can we, how can we resolve it? 
So just trial testing this against itself. Um, it's a bit too tight, so it's sort of holding itself there under its own, its own uh, weight. Um, so what we'll do is we'll put it back in the jig, move it over about probably half a mil, and uh, just do them again. That'll give us a little bit more clearance. All right, taking another half mil off, and that's what you want. There's no slop. Can't move it back and forth, but it sort of almost wants to hold on by friction, but it won't be so tight as to wipe all the glue off the joints when we are uh, when we put it together. So that's spot on, legends. Remember, this is just the two ends. I'm just trial fitting to each other, so that's not that's not an actual joint. That's just uh, testing the jig. Uh, so let's go ahead and cut all of them. Now again on the top front corner of the ends, you just want to leave this one untouched, alright? So you see that, you uh, go to route it, you got to stop, you got to put the notch in there for the front, but you can leave it like that for now. There's our little tutor, it all fits. Now we've got to put our little notches in for the uh, front panels, top and bottom. There's a bit of a break out there. Not, not fantastic, but it's going to be behind that anyway. And uh, that's going to be supported by the end as well. So no real strength um, compromises there. But yeah, try and avoid that. But importantly, uh, the, the rear joins are nice and flush. Everything lines up. So we might leave it there for this episode. Thanks for sticking with us. Uh, in the next one, we'll glue it up and we'll um, do the final assembly of the cleats and everything. Uh, and then we'll start looking at covering it with tweed and giving it a shellac final coat on top of the on top of the tweed. So join us for that one, Legends. I hope you had fun. I hope you build on one. If not, why not? Hurry up. Do something.